Welcome back to another edition of Tony's Fords and Mustangs. Today, we're going to talk about a car that was released in 1969, remained unsold, was shipped back to Ford, and rebadged as a 1970 model. The kind of the surprising thing about this is the car's badge had Shelby in the name. Stay tuned. So in 1965, Lee Iacocca approached Carroll Shelby and said, I need you to build me a streetable race car. And the GT350 was born. Now, Carroll Shelby, being a hot rodder himself and a, and a race car driver, looked at the Mustang platform and figured what any hot rodder would think. I need to lose weight and add horsepower. He changed some of the steering geometry. The engines were updated, blueprinted, balanced. Headers were added, a four-barrel intake. The, the cars were actually built in Carroll Shelby's facility that was based out of the L.A. airport. In 1968, the production of those cars was moved back to Michigan, and Carroll Shelby still oversaw it. So we're going to fast forward to 1969. And 1969 for Ford was a pivotal year. There were a lot of new models released. The Boss 302 had hit the streets. The Boss 429 was there. They also added the Mach 1. So you kind of had the Shelby's in a weird spot. So they were no longer the, the marquee performance car that they had once been. They had gotten bigger. The 69s were bigger than the 67, 68s, which were bigger than the 65s. They had added all kinds of options. Ford added a, a full list of options to the Shelbys. And in 69, they almost became like a grand touring car. They were no longer the, the potent performer that they had once been. They were also the most expensive car in Ford's performance lineup. They were a little over $1,000 more than like a Boss 302. And if you optioned it out, they got even to be even more. So it may not be a surprise to some of you to find out that there were 700 and roughly 90 of those cars that just didn't sell. They remained unsold. And Ford had an issue with these cars. And actually, the fall of 69, Carroll Shelby wanted out. He wanted to be done with this relationship. He could see where this was going. His name was now attached to a grand touring car, not necessarily strictly performance car. But Ford had this issue. They had 790 cars, the GT350s and GT500s. They didn't sell. They brought these cars back to Michigan. They rebranded them. And they, by rebranding, I mean they added a chin spoiler. They added some hood stripes, painted hood stripes onto the hood. But they re-serialized them. So the serial numbers were pulled off. 70 serial numbers were added, and they were pushed out as a 1970 model with a 70 warranty on them. And if you are familiar with the, the 69 Mustangs, you'll know that at the time, the ID tags were riveted to the door. In 70, they became a decal. The rivet holes for the 69s are still in the doors of the 70 Shelbys. And a 70 Shelby now is a highly sought-after expensive car. They are really nice cars. But they were no longer the performance cars that they that Carl Shelby originally intended. GT350, which is actually rare. There were more GT500s made, well, made in 69, but carried over to 70 than there were GT350s. This is a highly optioned car. It belongs to a friend of mine, Dan. Thank you, Dan, for letting me shoot this video. It's a really neat car. It's not a bruiser. It's not going to be that 428 Cobra Jet Mustang. Those cars were lighter than this car. This car's optioned out. It had the roll bar in it. It had the fold down rear seat. This car came equipped with air conditioning. It's a four speed and four speeds with air conditioning for any cars back then were relatively rare. The 6970 Shelby's, which are all really 69's, have a neat and unique look to them. on them. It has a real unique center exit dual exhaust. They are they are being appreciated now. They're bringing a lot of money right now in the, in the used car market. And they're very rare. And it still has performance aspects of it. It's not a slouch. It's 69 351 Windsor with a four barrel on it and a new intake is not a slouch. And of course the 428s got up and went. But they certainly were not 
the car that Carroll Shelby would have built had he been hands-on with it. This was more of a a Ford Motor Company car, and it was appointed as such. They threw every option at these things. Okay, thanks for watching. This is a relatively short video, but it's kind of a neat one. It's kind of unique in the history of Ford. I don't know that they ever pushed out a performance car, couldn't sell it, had to bring them back in, and then put new serial numbers on them to make them a new model year. That's I don't know that's ever happened with any manufacturer. But uh, take a look. So, where's it? I think I had to screw it up last time. Subscribes here, other videos over here. Do that. There's now 276 subscribers out there. Wow. That's, that's crazy. But thanks for watching. It's appreciated. See ya.